Our declaration of faith, it contains two parts. It contains two parts. Number one, acknowledgement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He alone is of worship. And affirmation that Muhammad was who he claimed to have been, the Messenger of Allah. So this expression, this kalima, we may call it shahada, we call it shahada, but if we want to get technical, it's technically shahadatain, because we're testifying to two facts. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, the first fact. Ashhadu an la Muhammad Rasulullah, the second fact. So in a technical sense, we are testifying to two things. Thus the term uh, shahadatain. In light of several factors, including recent events, it seems appropriate, it seems appropriate to examine, even for just a few moments, to examine the biography of our Prophet. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon us. <coughs> our Prophet was born in the year 570 in Arabia in a place that was not considered an important region in the same way that people considered Egypt as important or consider, considered Palestine as important or considered uh, Persia, Iran today as, uh, as important. By the standards of scripture, Arabia, before the emergence of Islam, Arabia was considered a barbaric place. A barbaric place. People would not only worship idols, because idol worship is found in many places. But there, people not only worship idols. Their idols included food idols. That they would worship food idols. The society had things such as immorality and senseless killings, uh, uh, tribal conflicts. One of the famous stories is that uh, what do you call it? a camel strayed into some other land and it caused a war. It caused a war that lasted several years. A camel straying into uh, to other. To, uh, to other tribal lands. It was a place where female infanticide was practiced and on and on and on and on. 
And so we keep this in mind as we go forward. We look at the biography, his biography, Ali Azad When he was born, his father, Abdullah, was already dead. And his mother, Amina, she passed away when he was six, when he was six years old. And in addition to that, important uh, parts of his life before Nabuwa and after Nabuwa, he, there were various, uh, for lack of a better word, caretakers who were dying at these uh, rather sensitive moments or vulnerable moments. And he was ummi. He was somebody who was not educated. Now, most humans at that time, and this is sometimes misunderstood, now, most humans at that time could not read including in the Arabian society. Most people in that time could not read. Reading was a skill that was restricted largely to the royalty and, and, and uh, clergy and, and, and classes of people of, that, of those types of classes. Now, with such a background, and we're giving the early picture of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with such a background, he should have lived and died forgotten in history. With such a background, he should have lived and died forgotten in history. <clears throat> and to use uh, modern language, the Arabian society not only had uh, a dysfunctional society, there was also it can also be argued that there is a bit or a, a, a possibility of generational trauma. And let me give this example, because in this country, in the United States, when a child, when their parents die, or through some other means, perhaps they go to prison, or any of these types of events, when they die, the children end up in something called foster care, something called foster care. Children's services go on to uh, foster care. And there is a high likelihood when the parents are not present, there is a high likelihood that the child grows up into, uh, it grows up to, first of all, to not continue their education. And to engage in a life of destruction and a life of crime. There's a high likelihood of that happening when the parents are not present. And I'm talking about the foster care system here. But that was not the case with Muhammad. This was not the case with him. He eventually grows up having earned a high degree of respect of the people of Mecca. And they used to call him by the term Asadic and by the term Al-Amin. They used to call him these terms, like he's very, he's very honest, he's very uh, trustworthy. He was viewed, he was seen in his society, in his community, he was seen as a fair man as a fair man. And one of the stories, again, this is before Nabuwa, and I have a point to come to, so I have to give these intros first. Before Nabuwa, the, first of all, the Makkans and the Arabs generally, they had respect for the Kaaba. And there was an occasion of a flood in which the, the Kaaba had to be rebuilt. And so they rebuilt the Kaaba. And the black stone. Who gets the honor of putting the black stone into the corner of the Kaaba? This question was about to lead to a 
a very serious conflict because every tribe wants the honor of putting that the black stone into the corner of the Kaaba. And they decided to let Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam be the uh, judge. And so what does he do? He takes a cloth and he has the people from each group hold on to the cloth and they put the black stone on top of it and they carry it and then he himself puts the black stone and inserts it into the corner of the, of the cow. So I'm giving these examples to reach a certain point. But for now, in keeping with the divine, with the prophetic sunnah, we pause, seeking Allah's mercy, guidance, and forgiveness. We begin, we again begin by invoking Allah, Allah whose mercy is filled by all in this world, and Allah whose mercy is prepared for those that have Iman and the right to come. We praise Him and we ask that, his, that Allah's blessings and peace be upon His Messenger and upon His family, His companions, and all who follow in this particular path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah commissioned this man as he has done with messengers and prophets before. Allah commissioned this man to function as a messenger, to function as the, the last prophet after whom there is no other prophet. And you will recognize that very often we quote here. Where Allah says, "Makana Muhammadun Aba Ahadun Rajalikum, Wala Yaw Rasul Allahi Wa Khatam Al Nabiyyin," that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not the father of any of your males, rather he is the messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. Makana Allah Wa Kulli Shayin Alima, and Allah has full knowledge of all things. So in the highlights, I think that most Muslims are aware or have knowledge of the general outline or highlights of events that occurred in the life of the Prophet after the things that we have just uh, described. That when he received the Mu'a, that it generated opposition, it generated persecution, it generated uh, torture, actually. It generated torture of his followers, of those who affirm and believe in his message. Again, I'm giving a, a historical gloss. Confrontations, military confrontations with, with the, the Meccan led forces. A variety of intrigues against him as a person and against his message in particular. There were assassination attempts, attempts to hunt him down and kill him. There were assassination attempts. There were attempts to uh, to uh, uh, to bring him down. There were what we call in today's language economic sanctions in the Meccan period. There were economic sanctions to the point where the Muslims had to, the, the, the tradition say the Muslims had to tie boulders or rocks to their stomachs to deal with the pains of hunger. That's how bad it was. 
when the Prophet goes to Mecca, eventually there is a siege. And again, I'm glossing over a lot of historical details. So there was a lot of nasty responses to his message. And now comes some of the main points I want to, I want to give. Is that despite all of those things, despite all of those things, despite the fact that his parents were basically not in the picture, his mother had died uh, when he was six and his father Abdullah had, uh, Abdullah had died when he, uh, before his birth. Despite all of those things, despite the opposition that I have given a provided gloss over, Despite those barriers that would get in the way of other people, they didn't get in his way. The barriers that lead to dysfunctions, that lead to lack of progress in life, this it was not his fate. And now comes the real lesson I want to share. The real point I want to share. By looking at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By learning this from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is important in the modern world. And this is arguably especially important in the West. Perhaps more so than even in the countries that don't have the same amount of wealth and comfort that we have here in this country. The lesson is. Do not let the past, do not let the past stunt your life and to stunt your development. Don't let the past get in the way. Neither allow naysayers to stop you from making your life better and uh, progressive. This is the point, the main point. Do not be, and this is something we learn from Islam itself, do not be the agent of your own downfall or of your own destruction. Engage in healthy thinking and healthy living. Engage in not just seeking Allah's forgiveness, but engage in seeking, seeking and engage in self-forgiveness and indeed in, in, in forgiveness from others, or in seeking the forgiveness of others, or forgiving others rather. Don't make excuses to sabotage your own life and your own development. Keep the negative in, in check by having a, a healthy and profound relationship with Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are things that we learn from our Prophet. Again, these are things we learn from our Prophet. I hope it's not necessary to quote this text and this text and this text and this in this text. These are things that we should really understand if we have a better picture of what the Prophet's life was and what his teachings uh, uh, consisted of. We have been saying in the last few weeks, we're talking about Satan about Shaitan and how Shaitan, one of the things that Shaitan does is attempts to keep us tied up in negativity. That Shaitan is the Shaitan, Satan, that seeks to generate conflicts, especially within family units. 
It is shaitan that wants to generate, or excuse me, he wants to, to stop progress. It is shaitan that wants to keep people trapped. As they use a modern term, it is shaitan that wants people to be trapped in their own uh, historical traumas. Shaitan is Allah's enemy. Shaitan is man's enemy. Shaitan is an enemy of mankind. He is the clear enemy of mankind. And what does Shaitan do? Shaitan appeals to those negative things that may already be present. And this is going back to the Sunnah, because many of the asqar that we read from the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and indeed many of the ayat of the Quran itself, that these are these are texts that are giving strength against those uh, negative uh, calls. And again, in a modern sense, if 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 a, if a modern uh, uh, analysis of the of, of the Prophet's life, people would say, "Well, it would have been normal if he had become." This bad person or that bad person, it would have been normal. It would have been expected because of his, of his background. But that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Actually, I'm thinking of there, there was an occasion. Let me share this story. Yeah, we have time. Let me share this very quickly. We have mentioned how the Kuffar had made many intrigues and conflict against the Muslims. And one of the things that happened, one of the things that happened is there was an occasion during you can call it the Cold War against Muslims when the Prophet and his followers they want to make the pilgrimage to Mecca. And of course, this the story is they were stopped. And they were not allowed to make the pilgrimage. A treaty was made. And a treaty with embarrassing conditions for Muslims. Embarrassing conditions. Uh, humiliating conditions for Muslims. Yet the Prophet signed the treaty. He be upon him, he signed the treaty. And in the midst of that, the people are looking and thinking, oh, what's, what's going on here? Like this, this, they think this is an example of weakness. Allah said to His Messenger, "In fatahan laka fatahan That's what He said. In fatahan laka fatahan mubina. That Allah says, Allah says, Allah has opened up for you a clear opening. Meaning here a clear victory. Because that became the foundation for the success of the Prophet later on. Now at this stage, I want to mention something else. An example of progress. An example of allowing blessings to come and not being overcome by past traumas. And that is of the Palestinians. That is of the Palestinians. And everyone in this room is certainly aware of what is happening with the Palestinians. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this affliction be removed from them. But you know there are videos. There are news reports and there are videos in traditional media as well as social media that show Palestinians in the midst of being bombed from the sky doing their traditional songs and their traditional dances of getting together in the open and praying in Jama'ah, having their Jama'ah prayer outside of the story of mosques, having their Jama'ah prayer, and even having weddings. There are videos of that, of that, not just one incident, of people 
having weddings and with the traditional celebrations that, that come as a consequence of that. I'm giving examples here of what they're doing is still progressing or moving forward with their lives, even in the midst of what, what seems to be overwhelming circumstances. And this really is a lesson learned from Islam. This is a, a lesson that has its origins in the actions and in the, the life biography of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, Allah made the Messenger to function in that way. Which is why, let me quote the verse again, I just realized I didn't quote the verse in English. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ يُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَيَوْمَ الْآخَرَ وَذَكْرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا That you have in the Messenger of Allah a goodly motto for those who believe in Allah and believe or believe in Allah and, uh, sorry who hopes in Allah I get the wrong translation those who has whose hope is in Allah and the final day and who contemplate Allah abundantly so Allah made the Prophet's life to function as an inspiration as an example for us as an inspiration or an example for all mankind in these areas as well as many other areas. So let us learn from that. Let us learn from our prophet. And then I'm not talking about the, the things that, that people tend to talk about. You know, we tend to talk about his beard and his clothing and how he used to eat and his swag and things like that. Let us be those who really look at the Prophet وسلم, as that guy that, that inspires us to be forward thinking, to be uh, uh, progressive in our lives, in, 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 in understanding of the, of the circumstances that we are in. And let us learn from our Prophet in keeping traumas and, and, and negativity in check. And let again learn from our Prophet let us learn to be those who build and not those who destroy, those who make our lives better in accordance to his example and in accordance to his teachings. And let me conclude with this hadith. The Prophet is reported to have said that if you see the world, I have to paraphrase the hadith now, this is 1.30. If you see the world ending around you, and you are at that moment planting a tree, continue to plant that tree. That's a lesson, that is a very important lesson from our Prophet, and I hope it demonstrates the points that I have attempted to convey. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his mercy, for his forgiveness. We pray to be people who really are upon his, the, the sunnah of Allah's Prophet, to be people who, who progress forward and not be stuck in past issues. Rabbana, hadnana min azwajna, wa dhurriyatna, qurru ta'ayman wajahuna, al mutaqina imam. Rabbana, atina fil dunya hasana, wa til akhada hasana, wa qina adhaba al-naam. Rabbana, la taj'alna ma'al qawmi ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبنا من ندمك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخفم عاد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين